Hello everyone. So after geometric optics, we now move on to the next topic of optics that is wave optics. Now this chapter of wave optics basically deals with the wave theory of light as you all know. Now this chapter is basically more interesting than the last chapter because as you all know that the last chapter was more like a mathematical topic but this is actually a conceptual topic. Moreover, there are some physical phenomena which you can relate with this wave theory of light. For example, if you have a compact disc, if you have a CD, you see, for example, that's, that this is a CD I have on my hand. If I rotate, if I keep rotating the CD, I see that for different angles, the color appearing on the top of the CD is different. For example, sometimes I see a yellow green pattern, sometimes I see a red green yellow pattern and the pattern keeps changing as I keep changing my angle of viewing. Okay. Now this is a very common physical phenomena which we observe and this can be explained with the help of wave theory of light. Another example could be you all might have seen a peacock the national bird of India. You see that the feathers of a peacock, the peacock basically looks very beautiful because it has different colors which keeps changing as you keep looking at the peacock from different angles. Sometimes you see a dark green pattern, sometimes you see a dark blue pattern. Now people have a misconception that this pattern which we see on the body of the peacock is because of some pigment present on the surface of or the skin of the peacock. But it actually is a very beautiful example of wave theory of light. Another example could be butterfly. A butterfly looks very nice, it looks very beautiful. Again, the different colors on the feathers of a butterfly can be explained with the help of wave theory of light. So you see that these are three examples which can be proved with the wave theory of light. So these are some examples which I guess are good enough to raise your interest in this topic. Now let's begin with this topic. The wave theory of light as you all know was first proposed by Christian Huygens and what he said was that light is actually a wave and the wavelength of the wave is very less compared to the dimensions of the object which we measure. Okay. Now, using this concept, he proved the laws of reflection, refraction, and what he said was that when light travels from a rarer to a denser medium, the speed of the light decreases. Speed decreases, or speed of light in denser medium is less than speed in the rarer medium. Now, this was in contradiction with the particle theory of light. The particle theory of light at that time proposed that when light pro moves from a rarer to denser medium, the speed of the light increases. So this was in contradiction with the particle theory of light and that's why this was not accepted at that time. Moreover, there was a inclination of the people towards following Newton's theories and Newton had proposed the particle theory. So there people were reluctant to follow the wave theory of light. Now after this, some time later, some years later, Th Thomas Young, you all know, performed the Young's double slit experiment and he observed some repeated patterns, alternate patterns of dark and bright fringes. And that phenomena couldn't be explained by the particle theory of light and so at it, this was the time when the wave theory of light came into existence. After that, a lot of experiments were performed on diffrac diffraction, polarization, and finally it was accepted. Okay, that light is a light also has wave theory. Now then, after that, as I had discussed in my last chapter, that then there was photoelectric effect, which couldn't be explained by wave theory, and which for which we had to consider the particle theory of light. And finally, it was decided that okay, fine, light is both a wave and a particle. It has dual nature depending on the situation. Now. 
when uh, after this interference diffraction polarization experiments there was a dis uh, people had a very big question that they, f they believe that uh, waves need a medium to propagate and they found it disturbing that light was traveling in vacuum because vacuum doesn't have a medium so how come if light is a wave light travels in vacuum it was then when maxwell proposed his electromagnetic theory and he said that light is electromagnetic wave and electromagnetic waves doesn't require me medium to propagate so this was about the brief history about the wave theory of light so now let's begin with what Christian Huygens had proposed and let's prove the laws of refraction and reflection with his principle. Before we do that, uh, let's understand a concept known as what is a wave front. Let's say that you drop a stone into a pond. What happens? As soon as you drop the stone into the pond, you see that there are circular ripples formed around the place where you had dropped the stone, like this. So if I take a snapshot of the whole thing, the top view of that looks like this, right? So this is the top view. Now, what can I say? I can say that this points or the particles in this circle all oscillate in phase now if all these particles are in maxima all these particles in this circle will reach its zero at the same time and it will reach its negative at the same time similar things happens with particle in, in this circle similarly a particle in this circle could be at its minimum point and after some time it may have a maxima so all the particles in a particular circle oscillate in synchronization with each other or I can say that they oscillate in phase they oscillate in phase so these surface or these circles of constant phase is known as a wavefront it's basically a surface of constant phase Okay, so if you have a, let's say if you have a point source and it emits waves in all directions, then what are my wave fronts? If I say that this point source emits waves in all directions in the space, then what is my wave front? Clearly my wave fronts are spheres now because if I take any particle in a particular sphere enclosing the circle point, then those particles will be oscillating in phase. So my wave fronts are in the form of spheres. Right? Because see, waves will be emitted in all directions like this. Onto the surface, into the surface. So this particle, this particle, this particle all will oscillate in phase. Similarly, a part, this, this distance is R, similarly a particular distance R from this point on the top will also oscillate in the same phase. So I'll get a spherical wave front. Now, and the spherical wave front will be increasing in diameter as I move outward from the center. Now, as I move too much outward from the center, let's say I'm my point source is here which emits waves and I am moving here. Now if I take a small cross section well, what I will see, I will see that this small section will look like a straight plane surface and I can say that here I can approximate here that the wave fronts are plane for this portion. Similarly for this portion I can say that this wave front is a plane wave front. So, if I take the radius to be infinity, what happens? The wave fronts actually be become plane wave fronts because the radius becomes too large. Now, so that was all about wave fronts. Now let's see what Christian Huygens proposed. Let's see what he proposed. He said that 
if I know the shape of the wave front at any particular time, let's say t is equal to 0, if I know the shape of the wave front, then I can determine the shape of the wave front at any particular time, let's say tau, if I know the velocity of the wave or the velocity of the wave front. If I know the velocity and if I know the shape of the wave front at any particular time t, then I'll be able to find the shape of the wave front at any particular time tau. And how we can do that? He said was that he said that each point on a wave front is a source of secondary wavelets or secondary wave fronts. So what he said was that let's say if I have this wave front at time t is equal to 0 then I can determine the shape of the wave front at time t equal to tau and how we can do that is that he said that each point on the wave front for example each point on this wave front this point this point this one 1 2 3 4 5 each point is a source of secondary waves so waves will be emanating from here from 2 from 3 from 4 from from 5. Now, to find the shape of the wave front at any particular time tau, we need to basically do a geometric construction. So, what we do is that let's say that this is my shape of the wave front at time t is equal to 0. Now, this is a source of wave. So, if I take time tau and I'll draw let's say I cut an arc of radius v tau because this distance is v tau similarly from here I can cut a wave of or uh, arc of v tau here I can cut an arc of v tau now if I join the uh, common arc to all these arcs then I get the shape of the wave front after a particular time tau. Remember here I know the direction of the wave front that the direction wave front is traveling in this direction. If I don't know the direction of the wave front, then I can get two cases: a uh, wave front like this and a wave front in this direction also. Okay. Okay, fine. So this was what Christian Huygens said, and this is known as the Huygens principle. Now let's prove the laws of refraction and reflection using Huygens principle.